The Aegean sun beat down, baking the earth, turning the sea to shimmering silver. The year was 480 BC. Whispers of war rode the wind, carried from far off Persia. The whispers spoke of Xerxes, the god king, told of his massive army that drank rivers dry, an army that threatened to swallow Greece whole. In the heart of Sparta, a city of iron and discipline, Leonidas trained. A Spartan prince, a warrior born and bred, his youth was long gone, but his body remained a weapon, forged by hardship and tempered in the fires of countless battles. He sparred under the unforgiving sun, the clang of his sword against his opponent's shield a solemn rhythm, echoing the beating of a war drum in his chest. Leonidas felt the weight of his city's gaze. Sparta, a city of warriors, looked to him. They sensed the coming storm, yearned for a leader. He could not offer them comfort, only strength. He would meet the coming darkness head on, for that was the Spartan way. The whispers of war grew louder. Soon they would be roars. Leonidas would be ready. He would meet the Persian hordes on the field of battle, and he would spill their blood in the name of Greece. Leonidas stood before the assembled Spartan army. Rows of bronze helmets and gleaming spears stretched before him. Their discipline was absolute, their loyalty unwavering. Spartans, his voice, though quiet, resonated with power. The Persians come to our shores. We will meet them on the field of battle for Sparta. A roar of defiance erupted from the Spartan ranks. They would stand against the tide of the Persian invasion. A cloud of dust announced the messenger's arrival. It billowed across the Spartan training grounds. Leonidas watched from the shade of a gnarled olive tree. He knew what this meant. War was no longer a whisper. The messenger, gasping for breath, approached. His tunic stained with grime, he clutched a scroll. He fell to his knees before Leonidas, a message from Xerxes. Leonidas unrolled the scroll, his face impassive, but a muscle twitched. The god king demanded submission. Leonidas crushed the scroll. Return to your master, he said. Spartans do not kneel. The messenger fled. Leonidas felt the weight of the world. The time for war had come. News of Xerxes' ultimatum spread through Sparta like wildfire. It ignited a firestorm of anger and defiance in every Spartan heart. Leonidas stood before the Council of Elders. Their wisdom was ancient, their judgment absolute. He spoke of the Persian hordes and the danger they faced. But Leonidas would not be swayed. We are Spartans, he boomed. We do not bow to any king. His words ignited the council chamber. They rose to their feet, eyes flashing with defiance. They knew what was at stake. One by one, the elders pledged their support. They declared their willingness to fight. They would stand against Xerxes. They would defend their homeland to the death. Before any Spartan king could march to war, he sought the guidance of the oracle at Delphi. Leonidas, cloaked in the mantle of his office, climbed the sacred mountain path. Each step was heavy with the burden of his responsibility. He was about to meet the voice of the gods. The air thrummed with an ancient power. It whispered through the rocks. It stirred the leaves in the sacred grove. He reached the temple. Its marble gleamed in the sunlight. It seemed to pulsate with an inner light. He entered the inner sanctum. There, shrouded in shadows, sat the oracle. Her voice, when she spoke, was a low murmur, but it seemed to reverberate through Leonidas's very bones. She spoke of a prophecy, a prophecy that foretold the fall of Sparta. Her words were a chilling whisper, a whisper that cut through the king's resolute heart. The oracle warned of a choice, a choice that could save Sparta, but it would demand a terrible sacrifice. Leonidas listened. He felt the weight of her words pressing down on him. His mind reeled, his heart thrummed with a primal fear. He had never questioned his duty, but the oracle's words had sown seeds of doubt. Leonidas descended Mount Parnassus. He felt the weight of the oracle's prophecy heavy on his soul. He had a choice to make, a choice that would decide the fate of Sparta. He returned to his city, he rallied his men. He would lead 300 Spartans north. They would meet the Persians at Thermopylae. The narrow pass known as the Hot Gates was a natural choke point. It was there that Leonidas would make his stand. There he would buy time for Greece to unite against the Persian threat. The Spartan army, a sea of bronze and leather, marched with grim determination. Their shields glinted in the sunlight. Their spears were a forest of deadly steel. They marched for their homes, their families. They marched for their freedom. They marched knowing that they might never return. 
Leonidas, at the head of his men, did not look back. His gaze was fixed on the horizon. He knew the odds were stacked against them, but Spartans did not fear death. They embraced it. They would fight with every breath in their bodies. They would make Xerxes pay for every inch of Greek soil. Their sacrifice would become a legend, a beacon of hope for all who dared to fight for freedom. The hot gates awaited. The Spartan army arrived at Thermopylae. The pass lived up to its name. It was a natural choke point. Leonidas surveyed the terrain. He would make the Persians pay for every inch of ground. They repaired a crumbling wall. It had been built by the Phocians. Leonidas watched his men. He would hold the pass. The days that followed were a blur of activity. The Spartan camp bustled with grim purpose. Leonidas trained with his men. He honed their skills. He drilled them in the art of war. He knew that every man had to be ready. Every man had to be a weapon. But Leonidas did not rely solely on Spartan might. He had sent messengers to the other Greek city-states. He pleaded for their aid. He warned them of the Persian threat. Some answered his call. A small contingent of Arcadians arrived. They were led by a grizzled veteran named Dioris. He pledged his allegiance to Leonidas. He swore to stand with him until the end. Then came a thousand Athenians. They were led by a young Strategos named Themistocles. He was ambitious, he was cunning. He saw the strategic importance of Thermopylae. He knew that this was a battle that had to be fought. He pledged his men to Leonidas' cause. Leonidas looked at the assembled Greeks. They were a diverse group. They were united by a common enemy. They were bound by a shared destiny. They were the shield that stood between Greece and oblivion. The Persian army arrived on the fifth day. They came in a tide of men and horses. Their numbers were staggering. The ground trembled under their feet. Their banners blotted out the sun. Leonidas stood atop the Phocian wall. He looked out at the approaching enemy. He felt no fear. He felt only a cold resolve. A hush fell over the Greek lines. The Spartans, disciplined as always, stood their ground. The other Greeks, inspired by their example, followed suit. They would face the Persian horde together. A single rider rode out from the Persian ranks. He approached the wall. He carried a white flag. It was a herald. He called out to Leonidas. His voice echoed across the battlefield. The herald spoke of Xerxes' mercy. He offered the Greeks a choice. Surrender their weapons and submit to Persian rule or face annihilation. Leonidas listened patiently. When the herald was finished, he spoke. His voice was quiet but it carried to the farthest reaches of the battlefield. Molon Labe, he said. The words were old Spartan. They meant come and get them. The herald rode back to the Persian lines. A ripple of anger passed through the Persian ranks. Xerxes, enraged by the Greeks' defiance, ordered his troops to attack. The first wave of Persians crashed against the Greek lines. They were met with a wall of bronze and steel. Spartan spears darted out. The air was filled with the clang of metal on metal, the screams of the dying. The Persians could not break through the narrow pass. They repelled wave after wave of attackers. As the sun began to set, Leonidas received a visitor. She was Gorgo, his wife, the queen of Sparta. She brought him words of encouragement. Sparta stands with you, my love. He drew strength from her presence. He would fight on. Dawn broke over Thermopylae. It painted the sky in hues of blood and gold. The Persian immortals, the god king's personal guard, moved with chilling grace. Their faces were hidden behind grotesque masks. Their presence sent a tremor through the Greek lines. Leonidas watched from atop the wall, knowing this was a turning point. He raised his voice. Spartans, remember your training. Today we fight for Greece. His words ignited the spirits of his men. They would face the immortals head on. The immortals attacked. They surged forward like a wave of darkness. The clash of bronze on bronze echoed through the pass. The fighting was brutal. The immortals were skilled. Leonidas fought like a man possessed. His spear cut down every immortal in his path. He was a beacon of defiance. For Sparta, he roared. The Spartans fought with the strength of ten men. Leonidas and his Spartans stood firm. Yenikes, the grizzled veteran of countless campaigns, fought alongside the Spartans. He was a giant of a man. His beard was streaked with grey. His eyes burned with a fierce light. His shield arm was a wall of muscle and sinew. 
He wielded his sword with deadly precision. He had seen the fear in the eyes of the young Spartan beside him. He had clapped him on the shoulder and said, fear is a beast that feeds on doubt. Starve it, Spartan, feed your courage. And the young Spartan, inspired by Dionychus's words, had fought with renewed vigor. Now, as the battle raged around him, Dionychus found himself surrounded by immortals. They pressed him from all sides. Their blows rained down upon his shield like hailstones. He gave ground grudgingly, his feet moving in the well-practiced steps of the Spartan warrior. He knew this could be his last stand, but he would make them pay dearly for his life. He roared, a sound that was half defiance, half a primal scream of rage. His sword flashed out, severing limbs, cleaving through armor, finding its mark time and again. The immortals, surprised by the ferocity of his attack, gave ground. They had expected fear, they had expected surrender, they had not expected this. Section 4, Betrayal Sting. The tide of battle seemed to be turning. The Spartans, inspired by Leonidas, fought with renewed vigor. The immortals faltered. A figure emerged from the cliffs. Leonidas recognized him. It was Ephialtes, a deformed wretch, twisted in body and soul. He sought revenge. He showed the Persians a secret path, a path to outflank the Spartans. Xerxes smiled cruelly. Ephialtes had underestimated the price of his treachery. He had betrayed his brothers and his king. Section 1. No retreat, no surrender. The news of Ephialtes' betrayal hit Leonidas like a thunderbolt. A Spartan had betrayed them, shown the Persians a secret path. Rage, hot and fierce, coursed through him, but there was no time for vengeance, no time for despair. The fate of Greece rested on his shoulders. He had to act quickly. He assembled his captains, their faces grim and battle-worn. Spartans do not retreat, he said. Spartans do not surrender. We stand and fight. His words were met with a guttural roar. They knew what awaited them. Death, but it was a Spartan's death. The sun rose over Thermopylae, casting long shadows across the battlefield. The air, thick with the stench of blood and sweat and fear, crackled with anticipation. The Persians were coming. Leonidas, standing atop the Phocian wall, watched their approach. They came from the front, a vast, unstoppable tide of humanity. They came from the rear, their numbers bolstered by Ephialtes' treachery. They surrounded the Spartans on all sides. The Greeks were outnumbered, outmaneuvered, but they were not outmatched, not in spirit, not in courage. Leonidas drew his sword. The sunlight glinted off its polished surface. It was a thing of beauty, a deadly work of art. Spartans, he roared, his voice echoing across the battlefield. Today we dine in Hades. A roar of defiance answered him, a roar that shook the very foundations of the earth. And then the Persians attacked. They came in waves, their numbers seemingly endless. They crashed against the Spartan lines like the sea against the cliffs, but the Spartans held. They fought with the fury of cornered wolves. Their spears darted out, finding their marks with deadly accuracy. Their swords flashed in the sunlight, painting the ground crimson. The battle raged for hours. The sun climbed higher, the heat oppressive. The air was thick with cries of the wounded, the clash of steel. The Greeks fought with courage, but they were tiring. For every Persian that fell, two more took his place. Leonidas, his armor hacked, fought on. He was a whirlwind of death. He knew it was time. He ordered the Greeks to retreat. Leonidas watched them go, sadness piercing through. He stood alone, a king, a warrior, a Spartan, ready to face his destiny. The hot winds blew over Thermopylae. They whispered through the bones of the fallen. The stench of death had long since faded, but the memory of the battle lingered. It clung to the rocks. It seeped into the very soil. The pass was silent now, the clash of steel, the screams of the dying, the roars of defiance, all gone. Only the wind remained, a mournful, haunting wind that carried the echoes of the past. The Greeks, inspired by the sacrifice at Thermopylae, had rallied. They had driven the Persians back. They had saved their homeland. The victory was bittersweet. It had been bought at a terrible price. The names of the fallen inscribed on a simple stone monument were all that remained of the 300. Leonidas, the Lion of Sparta, had become a legend. His courage, his unwavering dedication to duty, his willingness to sacrifice everything for his people, these were the stories that were told and retold around campfires and in hushed whispers. He was held up as an example to all who aspired to be warriors, to all who believed in freedom. The 
The Spartan legacy extended far beyond the battlefield. Their discipline, their unwavering loyalty, their fierce independence, these qualities resonated throughout Greek culture. Theirs was a city-state built on sacrifice. On the belief that freedom was worth any price, their story was a stark reminder that even the smallest of forces could make a difference, that even in the face of overwhelming odds, courage and determination could prevail. The Spartans had shown the world what it meant to be free, and the world would never forget. Their story, passed down through generations, would inspire countless others to fight for what they believed in, to stand against tyranny, to defend their homes, their families, their way of life. Thermopylae, the hot gates, had become a symbol, a symbol of courage, of sacrifice, of the indomitable spirit of those who dared to stand against the tide. The echoes of that battle still reverberate today, a reminder that freedom is a precious gift, a gift that must be defended at all costs, a gift that we, the inheritors of the Spartan legacy, must never take for granted.